Dame Esther Ranson says she's considering the option of assisted dying if her lung cancer treatment doesn't improve her condition. It was uh, in an interview uh, with the Today podcast on the BBC yesterday uh, that Dame Esther revealed that she's now joined the Swiss organisation Dignitas because she says she wants to spare her family the agony of seeing her suffer a painful death. While that interview has made every front page of the newspapers this morning, it's all over the internet, and I'm delighted to say that Dame Esther's daughter, Rebecca, Rebecca Wilcox, joins us now. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning. Thank you so much Good for morning. making time for us this morning. We really do appreciate it. Um, so, did your mother make this decision on her own and then reveal it to the rest of you, or was it a sort of a, a communal family thing? So, so not be talking about this lightly but I think you have met my mother and I think that you would know that she never makes a decision um in complete isolation but she doesn't care what anyone else thinks <laughs> <laughs> okay how are you feeling as a family because obviously you know I'm, I'm so sorry for for what she's going through what it means for all of you I know that you know you've got this Christmas that you weren't necessarily expecting to have but it's it's such a tough time isn't it and just such a horrible situation to be having to face with with it's horrific and she always promised us she would live forever and so she's not usually one to break her promises so we're a little bit upset about that but um the joy of having this Christmas it I mean it feels like a Christmas miracle and I hate saying that because it's so saccharine and trite and that is not what my family's about but we when we got the diagnosis in January, we never thought we would have this Christmas again. So Christmas has exploded over my house because this is where she's coming for Christmas Day. Um, and I am not letting anybody with any sort of snivel anywhere near me. Huh. Um, and if they come anywhere near me, I will spray them down with um, a hose. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a joy and a delight. And I would personally want to ground her plane if she was going to fly to Zurich, but I know that it's her decision. I just don't ever want her to go. Do you think she's right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're allowed to make decisions about everything in our own lives. We're allowed to make this decision, and I know this is constantly said, about our pets. So I have a very elderly horse who will have to be put down if something happens to him, and I would be considered inhumane if I didn't do that. And yet if mum is experiencing such dreadful symptoms and there is no hope, then why shouldn't she be able to make that decision? She said to me, we have medicines and drugs that help prolong life. Why are we allowed to use those and not allowed to use the ones that make you have a dignified death? I mean, that's what Dignitas is. It's a dignified death. It is your own choice. And you're not speaking in a vacuum here because I think it's fair to say that uh, your late father, Desmond, who I knew quite well, he, he didn't have a good death, did he? Yes. <laughs> it, uh, sorry. Inappropriate laughter is, is what my family does. It was, um, it was horrific, and uh, his death replaced our memories of him for a really long time. Uh, you remember second by second that horrific moment, however long it lasts, and it takes a really long time to, for it to be replaced by the wonder and compassion and genuine memories of such a wonderful father. I mean, he would be completely devastated that we were thinking about the tube that went in here, the pain that he had there, you know, the beats and the nurses and the doctors and the diagrams of the split aorta. And I couldn't remember what it was like to hug him. So that is what mum wants to avoid. Yeah, and I know that's what she's spoken about. She's campaigned all her life. She's achieved so many things. You must be so proud of her. We've got so many messages coming in today just applauding her for her bravery, speaking mm. out about this, because it's reigniting the debate, and this could prove to be a tipping point, couldn't it? I hope so. I hope so. I think we have midwives for birth. We don't have a midwife for death. Why can't she make her own decisions? She has never been one to listen in a vacuum to other people. It's, it's, she, it's really hard to talk about because I don't want her to die, but I want her to have her choice. And what she says about UK law is that we're constantly making these rulings on the worst case scenario. And there are nefarious people out there who would take advantage of relatives for a will or whatever it may be, but they are the few and the many are those who 
want the choice to have a dignified, painless death that is actually a positive experience. We should talk about death as if it could be a positive experience. When... The fact is I would never let my children near it. Very briefly, because we're out of time, I'm afraid, at the end of the show, but when the time does come, will you go with her? I... Do you know what? Legally, I can't say that, because I would get into trouble. But um, I hear that Switzerland is very nice. <laughs> Listen, we are so we grateful for you joining us this morning. Thank you for talking to us. Please send all our love to your mum. Um, we are all thinking of her. Yes. Thank you very much. It's an important conversation to have. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We and just to say, it. if you've been affected by anything we've been talking about this morning, you can find advice and support itv.com forward slash helplines.